When I first found out about my friend and customer's accident, he had already been engulfed in soybeans in a 100,000 bushel grain bin for about an hour. The county had a front end loader. They had helped to get the beans away from the bottom of the bin. About 1.30 that afternoon, the beans were down to a manageable level. We, we just used our hands when we didn't have a scoop. We only had so many scoops. I felt like he would have done the same for me, so I was happy to help. and. Uh, I'm glad he's still here. I could remember at about noon thinking to myself that I would never see him alive again. And um, turns out uh, a lot of things were on our side that day. The importance of grain bin safety, we've got some bins that are covered by OSHA rules, but on the family farm where OSHA is not covering, it's important for those folks to know the proper procedure for entering into a bin. There really doesn't need to be any grain bin engulfments or fatalities if we follow the right procedures, um, but actually following the right procedures, somebody can still get trapped in the bin, but if they follow the procedures, it's going to be much easier to have a successful outcome in getting them out. We're now producing, storing, and moving more grain than at any time in U.S. history. And unfortunately, we're starting to see the engulfments, the injuries, and the fatalities also growing. Grain bin entrapments are preventable if we follow the right procedures entering into the confined space of a grain bin. As we fill the bin, it crusts over at the top six or seven inches, and as we feed out from the bottom, it creates a void area that may be six inches deep or maybe 30 feet deep. And as the farmer walks on top of that, they collapse down through the grain and become entrapped. The important steps are to follow basic safety guidelines. And first and foremost, nobody under the age of 18 should be into a confined space. We need to lock out and tag out the auger, both to the bin and to the sweep auger. We can't be in with those running. We have to do air quality sampling to make sure that we've got enough oxygen in the bin. Then we need to be wearing a harness and be tied off. And very important is entering into a confined space is a two-person job. The person entering the confined space and then the person outside who's monitoring the rope and being in constant contact with the person inside. They released the grain underneath me and it, it sucked me down fast. And it was an experience. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm still, it was, I was getting kind of scared, honestly. It, it was a neat experience. Being sucked down in the corn like that, you could, uh, I could see how somebody could really panic really fast. If somebody starts to get entrapped, your first thing is to fight, you know, to see if you can get yourself out. If that's not going to be the case and you're going under, most farmers will have a ball cap on. Get that cap off and get it over the top of your mouth and your nose. Because what happens is as you go down under the grain, if you get the grain in your nose, your automatic response is to open your mouth. So now you've got grain in both your mouth and your nose, and we humidify all the air that we breathe, so we get that grain moist and it swells. And that takes care of our airway, and that's what causes the fatality. I had no movement on my legs at all. Couldn't, I could wiggle my toes very slightly in my shoes. I, I couldn't move. I mean, I was literally trapped. They don't realize that most people will become entrapped when the grain gets just over the top of their knees. And, you know, with our simulator, we will sink people down about to their belly button, and they can't move, and they're surprised by that. The one different factor about today was the fact that it was actually somebody that was stuck and you thought about what was happening, that could have been you, because near as I can tell, there's about six inches that separates you from being able to get out on your own and being stuck and going down deeper. The most important thing I learned today was that when you're enter entering a bin, to have somebody just watching you, you know, in case if something happens. As part of our Susan Harwood OSHA grant, that's one of the things we do is we need to meet back up with these people by email or by phone six months after the fact and ask them, what did they take away from the program? Have they changed their practices for entering into a grain bin? And we are finding that after the program that people are changing their, their protocols for going in.